hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode 92, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. Somehow I thought it was episode 91. I don't know. All of my examples say AIT 91. <laughs> <laughs> um, here we are. Welcome, Hayden. That will be episode 100 before long. We'll have to do something special. Oh, uh, yeah. How did we get to 92? I don't even remember 91. Anyway, uh, here we go. Um, yeah, so so I, I'm very keen on uh, today's five minutes because um, I have a real world problem that I need your help with, Anton. Ah, I love the ones that are so top of mind that we're we're trying to solve them as we do our show. <laughs> yes. So uh, I am struggling to uh, deploy data from uh, my dev environment to my production environment. I think that's episode. 48, right? Using Data Packager to move data from dev to prod as part of your install. Uh, yes, and, and maybe some enhancements to Data Package Manager could ultimately solve my issue, but uh, Data Package Manager does an insert statement into uh, my tables. I am trying to deploy configuration data, and uh, for my use case, I need to merge into production, not insert. Oh, I run into this all the time. You spend all this time tweaking all of your stuff in dev, and you've got it just the way you want it, and you want to move it to test or, or to production, whatever it might be. Um, yeah. 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 So uh, obviously, I can, I can write a script that I deploy, but I'm hoping that you have something uh, more elegant. I think I do. Um, and it, it harkens back to an earlier episode we did, uh, I think episode, I don't know, 27. Um, but I, and I have done this many times, I use a REST service to expose the data in my dev environment. And then I use the, the synchronization to synchronize it into the other environments, but not on a schedule, just when I tell it I want it to do it. Um, so I can show. Fascinating. Yeah. So I, I love the idea. And it makes me think of episode 27, where we talked about um, REST data synchronization. Yes, and it's, it's essentially that, but it's between my own two environments. And it's you know, it has a couple of little, uh, idiosyncrasies. So yeah, let me, let me show what you got. Um, I'll go ahead and kick out the timer so we're not cheating. Um, I think we've already cheated a little bit. <laughs> maybe. This is my dev environment. Um, and you can see I've got these values set up. I've got my server name. This is my dev server name. I've got initials, dental age. Um, and so if I come over to here, this is my production environment. It's on a different server. This is actually on apex.oracle.com. I'm calling that my production environment. And sometimes if I, if I change something here, let's say dental age in Massachusetts, I think at, uh, you can stay on your parents' dental insurance until you're 20 or something like that. I remember what it is. Um, so here it is. If I want to get this information synchronized over. So you could deploy a script that says update table where dental age, et cetera. But All right. All right. I'm just going to sync it over. Well, and what this is going to say is, the job was submitted because I am using synchronization and I, I've said to do it in the background, but now when I click go, it's going to show 20 because that's what I changed it to. Like magic. Um, yeah. So I, I would never have to write another update statement or merge statement again if, right. if, if I can do this. Right. And check this. So prod is still prod, but over here it's still dev because I didn't want that. Right. I didn't want that right. to change. So, okay. So really quickly, all I do is create a, um, a, a RESTful service. So here's my RESTful service. Um, I'm selecting just those things and right there. Yep. So th that's how you're excluding um, the value that contains production pro. That's right. Now, I've also added this little thing, this key. All I'm doing, this is like my poor man's version of security. There are better ways to do security here, but... If you don't know this key, you're not going to get any data back in here, right? So, right. Um, so somewhere I've got up here the the data. Um, I don't remember where it is right here. Um, with that key on there, I get the data. If I don't know that key, um, I try and guess one, two, three, four. I'm going to get no data in there. So that that's just a, a really cheap way to do it. Um, nice. So finally. So and, and then on the production end of things, it, 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 uh, as we demonstrated in episode 27, you can consume this data in, a, uh, in, in the Apex work utilities, the um, uh, REST data sources. Right. So I created a REST data source. Here's my REST data source. Um, and I just did, I did the super easy um, 
I created it. I just, you know, went through, I want, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. Test. I put in that endpoint that we were just talking about right here. Actually, it's ABC, one, two, three, ABC, just so that I get some data back here. Um, and, and so I just went through this little wizard. It's the same thing that it, it just goes through. It figures out you want. I'm not going to click next year because I don't want to create another one, but we can take a look at it. Here it is. Um, were there any uh, pitfalls um, to uh, consuming this Russell service? I would say, yeah, there is. The, the first thing you have to do is if you want to, and you want to do a merge, you have to identify one of your columns as a primary key column, one or more. So in this okay. case, it's my ID. In fact, the domain plus the var name are a logical primary key. So I could have done that, but I just I identified the primary key as this. In your production environment, you might have you you might and you might want to look at them using the logical name though mm. it depends on, on what your environment is but the other thing that's really key is when you actually go to your synchronization itself so let me jump onto the synchronization um it's going to tell you oh, oh i'm sorry I, i'm going to go back to that data that um that data profile um the data profile you also want to make sure that you edit your data profile in such a way that all of your varcar 2 columns actually match your Varkar 2 links. It's going to assume all of them are 4,000 characters, but my var name is really only 64, oh, 128. So you want to make sure those match up. Um, so then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do what I just said. I'm going to go to the synchronization. And it's going to tell me that in order to use this syn synchronization, it needs to add two columns. You do need these two columns to, to do synchronization in, in your tables. Um, so all you have to do is click um, the alter they, table. It'll actually run it for you. They make it super easy for you. Yeah. So, so, you, so you run the SQL, it adds to those two columns to your table, and then you're off to the races. Exactly, exactly. So then you just need to figure out how to do it. And all I'm going to say really quickly is you come, you add your button. Your button has uh, a process, and that's your process. Just right. synchronize data. That's your static ID. Right. Run. And this is so critical because your data may not be ready to deploy to production at every moment. You want to do it on a controlled basis. That's exactly right. Now, I'm also going to, I'm going to point out one thing. I, I've gone over time now. That was our five minute mark. Um, if you want to do this during your deployment, if you don't want to have to hit the button, it's super easy. You just do it as part of supporting objects, right? Come over to your um, supporting objects, installation scripts, and um, you just run that exact same code that I just showed you, and right. boom, there you go. Um, yeah. So um, I apologize for going about 20 seconds over on that, Hayden. So, so Brian has a great question here. Um, uh, I think the answer is no. Truly, you only need it in the target environment, but the, the thing is you generally you want your dev environment and your target environment to look the same. I don't have those two columns right now, and it's working, right? I, right. I don't have them in my dev environment. I only have them in my test environment, but or but, but I really would add them to my to my dev environment as well. Um, right. uh, and, and the other thing I'll just point out is I put a build on this button, so this button sync from dev doesn't show in my dev environment because it's just kind of would be it would just kind of seem silly to show that in the dev environment. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's a that's a great question, and uh, you do need to add them. Hey, and what if you don't want to um, add those columns? Then what do you do? Uh, if you don't want to add the columns. Right. And you still want to use synchronization like this. Oh, well, you could have an intermediate staging table, essentially, to um, uh, so, so as we saw in episode um, 27, uh, that same utility will actually create the table for you. Um, and then so Again, it's like a no sweat effort to create the staging table, and then you would then um, create a, your own process for merging the table, the data from your staging table to your actual destination table. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty a pretty straightforward a, approach. Um, if you don't want to add these to you, you have a system you're not allowed to add columns to it or something like that. Then, then you you, know, you had that other thing, but but. Apex does all of the rest of it, right? All of the, the synchronization, all, all that. It's great. Um, yeah, powerful stuff. So um, we've gone over our five minutes a little bit. I suppose if people, um, I have a little uh, 
a little something after that I think is kind of fun. Um, but if you came in for just five minutes, well, you're already over, so you better beat it. Um, but do all those yeah. things. Uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, so, Hayden, the, the other thing that I have is, and I just, just found out about it um, through, well, I found about it roundabout, but ultimately through a tweet um, by Chris Saxon. And I understand that the working name for this is Squizzle. It's essentially, it's Wordle, but with SQL. So, um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my, share it here. I don't know if it's big enough, um, but you, you, much like Wordle, Wordle, you have to pick five letters and check to see if it's the right, uh, the right one. If, with Squizzle, you have to pick five different pieces from, um, from SQL snippets to come up with a valid SQL statement. Um, and not just any valid SQL statement, the valid SQL statement of the day. Um, so it's, uh, it's very much like Wordle, but for, for SQL. Um, and are you a fan of Wordle? I, I actually do like Wordle. I don't do it every day um, just because I don't think about it. But uh, um, where can we play Squizzle? That's the question. Um, devgem.oracle.com. Yeah, devgem.oracle.com. Um, but Chris Saxon has a tweet about it here. I think we're going to put a link to Chris's tweet um, uh, here so that people can respond to him as well. So that will be on the screen or in the notes or something like that. Um, the link to, I suppose we could put the link to both. Um, this, so that's it right there. I think it's, uh, well, I think it's F question mark P equals one zero 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 one on the dev gym. Um, so, uh, I love to hear if people, uh, if people play it, I've only heard about it minutes ago, so I haven't actually played it yet <laughs> myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited to give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Very uh, creative on the on behalf of the dev team, the dev gym team. Yeah, it, it's funny because it's built with Apex, and I've been looking for a project like this to just do, just for fun, like something like this. I wish I had thought of it. Now I've got to come up with something to equally uh, entertaining. Um, right. Well, right. I'll, I'll be happy to consume it. Uh, yeah, excellent. Well, Hayden, um, people have wasted a perfectly good 12 minutes uh, with us today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I say we uh, let them have their lunch. Ah, and me too. All right. Yeah. So do all the things. Tell your mom about the show. See you next week. See you guys.